Hello, my name is Karim Douyab. I'm one of the co-founder of Jetpack.ai, a data science company based in Brussels, Belgium. Today, I'm really pleased to tell you the story of a map that I designed more than a year ago, uh, which generated quite a lot of attention, to say the least. I'll be talking about how this map came to be and uh, why I think it went so viral. So the story goes as follows. Uh, during an evening of October 2019, I was browsing through my Twitter timeline, and over the year, I've built myself a great collection of figures that I follow in the domain of art, design, architecture, as well as uh, data visualization. And Twitter has truly became a great source of inspiration for me. During that evening, uh, I came across a particular tweet that triggered my attention. The tweet was from Laura Trump. She tweeted a US uh, electoral map from 2016 of this familiar sea of red that you see in uh, the classical media. Um, and she was sort of implying that America as a whole is mainly Republican. Um, and over the top, you could read the caption, try to impeach this. So I felt there was something deeply wrong about this map, something I could maybe fix. So I took it as a personal challenge um, and I had to repair this data visualization lie as Alberto Caro would put it, a uh, great book to recommend. So what I usually do when I have a burst of inspiration like this is to open an observable notebook and start drafting my data visualization idea. Um, observable is a web-based tool that allows you to create JavaScript notebooks. Um, you, with it, you can import, process, and visualize data within the same browser environment. And what I find fascinating about it is that um, they've managed to create a community of talented members that openly share their, their work together. And not only you get inspired by them, but you also practically learn about how the piece that you've liked were developed. Therefore, it has become my tool of choice when it comes to experimentation with data viz. And I'm not paid by any mean by uh, observable to say this kind of stuff, of course. Uh, I just wanted to acknowledge the, um, the critical role this tool had on the development of the viral map that I'm talking about. So what I've done is uh, search for an existing notebook in observable that was already using US election data as well as maybe some uh, sort of population information. Um, so I got pretty lucky and the first result I found was precisely what, what I, will, I was looking for. So there was this um, notebook from Jake Lowe that was uh, displaying the 2016 US election result at the county level on a map. So there was also uh, some data about population in it. So that was great. And um, that was a in, in fact, um, the best starting point for what I intended to do. So from there, uh, I used the fork feature of Observable, which allowed me to duplicate and build upon an existing notebook. Um, what I did is was simply to remove the previous explanation um, simply by editing the code. Um, then I changed the title to put the context of what I wanted to do. So in here, I said, uh, try to impeach this. Challenge accepted. Um, yeah, so that's done. And from there, I um, I modified the code by just removing first the legend that I didn't need. Um, and also I decided to um, binarize the election result by coloring each county either red or blue based on the winning uh, party. So either Republican or Democrat. And within a couple of minutes, I was able to programmatically recreate the map which was originally posted by Laura Trump. So starting from this original map, I decided to remove the color encoding of the counties, but also keep their boundary in order to uh, start from a blank slate. 
Then um, using turf.js, an advanced geospatial JavaScript library, I computed the centroid of each polygon associated to the, each county and simply draw a point right at it. Um, since my initial idea was to provide a better reading of the election in terms of population, I then started uh, scaling the dots according to their associated voting count using a square root scale of the voting count to compute the radius of each bubble. Then I reapplied the color of the winning party in each of the county, county representation. And that's where I really told myself this is going in the right direction. It's probably gonna be a much better representation of how American people have voted. I was still annoyed though by this situation that you see here highlighted where a lot of small, highly populated county were overlapping amongst each other. And the way to overcome this situation is to use the tree force layout. It's basically a simplified physics-based simulation where you can either define forces between elements that causes them to attract or repel each other, or you can also provide a center force that causes the element to be attracted to a defined point in the plane and at the same time provide a collision constraint that would prohibit any overlap between the elements. Uh, and that's what you see in this animation. What's really powerful about this force layout is that you can define a center force for each of the specific elements. And if this center is associated to, to a value that you map on an x-axis, for example, you end up with a smooth density distribution of the dimension used. So in our case, what we want is to define the center force for each bubble to be the centroid of its associated county. That way, the bubble would try to get as close as possible to their centroid without overlapping with each other. By doing so, you end up with this representation that pushes away the counties from each other while trying to get as close as possible to, the, to their original geolocalization. So you clearly see some sort of deformation of the general shape of US, but at least you understand what it is. Also, when I started this implementation, I was aiming to respond directly to the tweet of Laura Trump, and I thought it, I could maybe find a way to start from her map and replace it with my understanding of the election result. The idea being to provide a visual counter argument because I thought this could have a much greater impact. The way I would transition between those two maps is by using Flubber, a JavaScript library developed by Noah Vletman, that allowed a smoother transition between two SVG paths. Um, as you see in this example, the standard transition between two shapes doesn't always work as expected, and this slip fixed uh, the corner cases. The way I've used it is simply by transitioning between the polygon of the county to its bubble representation. And as you see, it is pretty smooth. Then I perform this transition to all county in order to get this lovely transition. And this was great because creating this sort of animation avoid the need to explain the visual. You start from the original map and then people see uh, the county, county morphing to a, a bubble. So people understand the bubbles are actual county representation. You don't need legend and you sort of keep the visual context. Then I created a delay in, in the transformation. Um, I'm not making them appear at the same time. By creating this delay based on the X coordinates of the point, um, I create this kind of dramatic effect um, that worked pretty well um, overall. And so from there, I started recording the, the animation, creating um, a GIF, uh, and then prepare my reply to Laura Trump. So I quoted her tweet, uh, included, including uh, my, um, my GIF into it, and then just said, uh, challenge accepted, and provided a bit more explanation than it the published uh, button and went to sleep. The next day, this is what my phone uh, 
would have looked like. Um, it was buzzing with notification for a week long. Uh, overnight, I gained 7,000 new followers on Twitter. And um, the tweet actually got uh, 30,000 likes about that and, um, and 10,000 reply. Looking at the tweet analytics, I figured out uh, that the number of impression, impression, the number of people having seen the tweet was above 3 million. And looking back at the origin of this explosion of likes on Twitter, I figured the end of God touched the tweet. And I'm not talking about the football God, but rather the data visualization God. Uh, Mike Bostock himself, the inventor of D3GS, he was among the first one to like the piece, which I believe was the main trigger of all this craziness. So in regard to the number of likes that this triggered, um, my original post got 30,000 likes, but then Jack Miller um, took the GIF uh, without credit, added the um, quote, land doesn't vote, people do, and gained 130,000 likes, um, which is insane. And then uh, a year later, during the 2020 uh, election, the, ma the map resurfaced, um, and a few accounts gained quite a large amount of likes. Uh, for example, Bettina here uh, has won uh, almost a quarter of a million uh, likes, um, and other accounts gained uh, hundreds of thousands of likes. Even Sarah Cooper, uh, this comedian that likes to mock, mock uh, Trump, um, gained 150,000 likes. And so altogether, those six accounts, um, they uh, globalized a total amount of like, which reached three quarters of a million like, which is insane. Um, and uh, the number of impression out of it might be about hundreds of millions, um, maybe more, maybe less, I don't, don't know. Concerning the press coverage of this piece, there wasn't much of it in 2019 when I first released the piece. Uh, it's only when it resurfaced and became viral, viral for the second time during the election of 2020 that the mainstream media decided to talk about it. Um, so it's, it all started with an interview that I gave to Fast Company, which wrote the full story about the GIF. From there on, um, the New York Post asked me whether I could reproduce the map with the latest results. So that's what I did, and I sent send it to them. It became the most read article for a couple of days during the last week of the election. Um, and the craziest thing happened next. Fox News uh, released the story, related the story, and this was nuts by creating these alternative maps, I was specifically targeting this media that most of the time use misleading uh, election, election, electoral maps. So somehow this brought back to me some hope in the future of America. Then the LA Times wrote about it and multiple other international newspapers talked about it, as well as all the main Belgian newspapers uh, that were really proud that uh, a Belgian fellow uh, was at the origin of all of this. Now, if I step back a bit and uh, I'm looking at my database, I don't think I would have been able to create it without the legacy work of so many other who have contributed to the success of this data visualization in one way or another. Um, and as Carlo Fuentes puts it, there is no creation without tradition. The new is an inflection on the preceding form Novelty is always a variation on the past. When I think about it, um, what I've produced isn't much more than what, I, what was already existing. The fact that it was received so well by such a large audience is probably because it occurred at the right time in the proper context. And so there was uh, a few key elements that made it shine, I believe. The first one is it was addictively animated in a looping fashion, using a GIF, a format that any device can read. And also the simplicity of both the message and the visual was crucial, of course. Um, there was no need for explanation or legend, uh, which made the message universal and probably contributed to its success. All of this to say that I wouldn't have been comfortable if I didn't release the code 
openly accessible for people to reproduce what I've done. And my greatest joy was to see many other applications of this data vis technique in the context of other uh, election results, um, whether it's in Spain, Switzerland, Germany, Europe as a whole, and, and, and so on and so forth. When I first released the data visualization, uh, I got plenty of feedback. Some were about mistakes that I made and uh, I had to fix them during the following day. And since the code was openly available, um, people directly pointed out where was the issue. Also, I was misled by the original map of Flora Trump, which actually had more county colored red than the proper 2016 results. And there was some problem that I had to overcome in Alaska, which doesn't have counties for some reason. So all of those of these were non-fundamental art issue to fix. But other comments were about the fact that my visual wasn't the best representation of the electoral, electoral system either. Um, and indeed, my original intention was to make a point showing Laura Trump and her supporters that traditional map cannot be used to show how people have voted. This, of course, got me thinking and I've compiled my reflection and ideas in the long form that you're seeing here. I first tried to come up with a better representation of the popular vote by splitting the bubbles according to the proportion of Democrats versus Republican in each county. And by doing so, you obtain the following picture where the ratio between the amount of red and blue pixel corresponds precisely to the national popular vote ratio. And a great suggestion from Arnold Platon was to always put the winning party to the left of the bubble in order to easily identify the winning party of a given county. But the national popular vote isn't the way you win an election in US. The election is determined at the state level. Each state has a certain amount of electors from uh, the electoral college. And most of them have a winner-take-it-all system that awards all electors of the state to the candidate who wins the state popular votes. Um, so you shouldn't be using county-level maps uh, to show the result of a US election at the first place. But traditional maps aren't the best option either. Um, they correctly tell you what party won a specific state. But looking at it, you have the natural tendency to give more importance to states which have a larger footprint. For example, look at the state of Montana, uh, which has almost which is almost 17 times bigger than the state of New Jersey. Um, but New Jersey has 14 electors versus three for Montana, which makes it almost five times more important in the election process. So there's more relevant representation that exists uh, and they're called cartograms. Here is an example of one kind created by the newspaper 538, where each state has an area proportional to its number of electors and where some geographical references are still satisfied and um, provide um, a better representation of the electoral system in US. This concludes my talk. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it and learned something useful from it. If you like what you saw, don't hesitate to follow me on Twitter. That is usually the place where I publish my database experimentations or visit my portfolio uh, at karim.news. And for any commercial inquiries, reach out to me via, via uh, info at jetpack.ai. So thanks you, thank you very much. And um, I hope you enjoyed the rest of the conference. Cheers.